Hi, I'm Kaylee, and today we're going to make mulberry ice cream. Yay! You want to show us how to pick our main ingredients? Just pick them off the ground. And then uh, you put them in the bucket? Yeah. All right. So. I like to eat them. <laughs> you like you like to eat them. Me too. So this is a mulberry tree. It is on our property. And we are going to pick mulberries. It is a beautiful day. And there are more mulberries than even we know what to do with. They will stain your hands and clothes. So you wanna make sure that you color coordinate your kids with the mulberries. Today, Kaylee will be wearing purple today, so that no stains, hopefully, will last on these clothes. Okay, let's pick mulberries, kid. So I have many recipes worth here. This is actually about eight cups of mulberries, but one batch of this is actually about two cups. So when I give you ingredient amounts, it's actually going to be for the original recipe, but I have leveled it up <laughs> for the amount of mulberries that I have. So the original recipe is going to be one tablespoon of frozen orange juice concentrate. Next, we have a quarter of a cup of cranberry juice. This is a cranberry juice cocktail, but it is 100% juice. And finally, two cups of mulberries. Go ahead and rinse them, but many recipes are going to tell you to pull out this little stem, and that is a messy, and difficult proposition, don't bother. You're not going to need to do it. Mm -hmm. All right, we're gonna do this one together. Ready? Okay. Okay. Whoa! Look at all the mulberries. Look at all the mulberries. Are there any stink bugs on you? There are no stink bugs in there. Once you have your berries, your juice, and your orange juice in here, then we're going to puree this. You can do it in a blender or you can do it in a food processor, which is what I am going to use today. Okay, now once you puree your berries, you're gonna notice that you have a beautiful juice and pulp mix. Your seeds are still gonna be in there. Those little chopped bits of stem are going to be in there, but we are gonna get rid of them with a simple colander. So this is just a metal colander. I'm gonna put it right there. Wanna help me? Okay. We're just gonna pour our mix in here. So I'm gonna gently scrape the pulp, and you can do this with your hands too if you have a little kiddo who yeah. wants to get their hands dirty. You can have them put their hands in there too. We're just pulling that pulp away from the edge so it'll strain through. Now. You may have another one. I like to just play with it. Now, we have all the juice out of it and we're down to pulp, seeds, and stem. You can stop here if you want to, but there is a lot of beautiful stuff down here on the bottom. So, you'll notice all these little pulp pieces that will come through here. If you put in a little more effort and have your little helpers help too, scrape it against the side, push that pulp through, and leave behind the seeds and the I stems. I like to just play with it. Okay. And the stems and the seeds. Once you've done that a little bit, you'll notice when you use your spatula and scrape down on the bottom, you'll get a nice stream of pulp and even more juice coming out. So we're gonna finish that up and then we'll move on to the I next step. I am doing the tall one. You can do the shorter Oh, okay. Because I'm this big. <laughs> okay. Okay. We have the first part of this done. It is beautiful. 
It is also worthwhile to note that if you added some honey to this and boiled it down until it started to thicken, you would have a wonderful pancake syrup. So double duty on this recipe. When we're making the sorbet, it does not need any additional sugar. If you did get end up with some seeds or stems in there, don't worry about it because they are entirely edible. You can double strain this if you want to to get out any little stragglers, but honestly, I just leave them in there and eat them. So at this point, I'm going to put this into a uh, freezer safe, fully sealable container like this one and I'm going to freeze it until it is solid. Now, after it has been in the freezer for several hours, preferably overnight, you will have a solid block. You will see it is very tender. So you can do sorbet a couple of different ways. You can gently just scrape it into a little roll like this, and you can certainly just eat it like that. If you want it to be very, very soft, then you can put it back in your food processor and you're gonna end up with a very soft, beautiful sorbet. And that is what I'm going to do. You can absolutely make this into popsicles or anything else you want. It's gonna come out of here super easy. Here is our beautiful, smooth sorbet and it is delicious. What do you think, Kaylee? Mm -hmm. <laughs> you're covered in it a little bit. Don't forget to subscribe over here. See you next time.